Good morning and welcome to Victory Lutheran Church, Jamestown, North Dakota. We're so glad that you can join us today here for our online service. The worship team is getting ready to bring us some music later on. If you have a copy of the New Testament, open it to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. It's time to have church here at Victory Lutheran. This morning's message is taken from Matthew chapter 13. It's called the God of small beginnings. You know, as in recent weeks, as we've seen, God separates believers from the unbelieving world and even from those who pass themselves off as true believers. God does not remove Jesus' followers from the world. He actually helps us to grow in our faith while being a part of this world. Jesus does not lift us out of the storm. He lifts us up in the storm. You may not think that you have a whole lot to offer, but what God has given you, he can use in a mighty way. Let's read the first of two parables that we're going to be looking at today. Both are found in Matthew chapter 13. The first one, the parable of the mustard seed, is found in verses 31 and 32. Reading in Jesus' name, he put another parable before them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It's the smallest of all seeds, but when it was grown to a larger than all of the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. The mustard plant spoken of here is actually a tree big enough that you can climb into it. But it does start out as an incredibly tiny, tiny seed. In reading on this, I found out that you can line up 18 to 25 mustard seeds across the face of a dime. Well, from a very small beginning, Jesus and his 12 disciples, the kingdom of God has grown and is growing. It's become a place where many can take refuge, where many can find rest and comfort. And the world has benefited from it as well. Um, you only have to think about orphanages, medical clinics, hospitals, schools for elementary children, grade school children, um, high schools, colleges, universities, programs that feed those who cannot feed themselves. Dr. David Bast has written that we're not very much interested in smallness or in things that seem insignificant, insignificant movements. Just like the world, the American church loves a winner, and we define winners by big numbers and lots of dollars. We live in a celebrity-obsessed culture and a lot of that has rubbed off on Christians. God is the God of tiny beginnings and seeming weakness. He delights in using little people and what look like insignificant movements, but the small beginnings end in the great big results. God's strength is made perfect in weakness. It is when we are weak that we become strong. That is the message throughout the entire New Testament. The quiet, slow, beneath-the-surface operation of God's Word and Spirit working through ordinary people produces change, like water that eventually wears away a stone. When Jesus spoke these two parables, his church wasn't even a blip on the map of, of the world, as far as the radar of the world was concerned. And yet today's followers are across the world and spreading his Word, and the church continues to grow across the globe. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that every preacher is going to draw big crowds and that every church is going to boast huge numbers. The Lord still works in small, hidden ways. As commentator Dale Bruner explains, Jesus' point is not that the whole world will be converted, but that the whole world will be reached. The bigness promised by these seed parables is not to be understood as worldly bigness, but in the spirit of the gospel as the true bigness of the fruit of life in the whole earth. Jesus is encouraging us to have confidence in the gospel, to have confidence in the God of tiny beginnings and in unsung efforts, confidence that our own small works for the Lord will never be in vain. The scriptures put it as a single cup of water given in Jesus' name. To proceed from a small beginning into a vast world involves a great deal of trusting world is always telling us to think big, but Jesus is encouraging us to think small. 
Have you ever reflected on the way the gospel really works in the world? Think about how the church is built. It actually starts with a weak preacher and weak, small message. Look at the testimony of the Apostle Paul in Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. He wrote to the Corinthians and said, I, when I came to you, brothers and sisters, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. God does not save people by worldly power or wisdom. Neither Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, socialists, communists, environmentalists, capitalists, none of them are going to save the world. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe, says the apostle in 1 Corinthians 1 2. Maybe 1 21, excuse me, be 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. In his commentary on the parable of the mustard seed, the great 4th century theologian and Bible translator St. Jerome points out just how small a thing the preaching of the gospel really is. This is what Jerome wrote. The preaching of the gospel is the least of all the teachings. At first glance, there seems to be no real truth in this teaching that proclaims a dead Christ and the scandal of the cross. Compare it with the systems of the philosophers, with their books, with the splendor of their eloquence, with their fine style, and you'll see just how much smaller the seed of the sower of the gospel is. But this preaching, which seems so small in the beginning, when it has been sown either in the believing soul or in the whole world, grows up into a tree. Christianity does not expand as a result of clever publicity campaigns. God's kingdom does not advance by means of massive government spending, political parties, let alone military might. It is not human power that causes the Christian faith to keep growing and spreading. It happens when the seed of the gospel is sown. God has a plan of salvation, a plan of changing people, for dealing with our sin, for transforming the world. He sent Jesus to die and rise again. And he had eyewitnesses tell Jesus' story to other people. And those that heard it and believed it were changed. And they told it to other people. And this went on and on and on. The greatest power in the world is a 2,000-year-old piece of good news. The Bible says in Zechariah 4, verse 6, It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Our only weapons are words of wisdom and deeds of kindness, surrounded by prayer. It's not hard. Simply tell someone where you were when Jesus saved you, what he's done for you. When you think of someone out of the blue and you have no reason to be thinking of them at all, take that as a prompt from the Lord to be praying for them. You know, back in the... Um, 18th century, there was a preacher, an evangelist by the name of Charles Wesley, and he once said that more victories are won in prayer than from the pulpit. Mustard seed growth is the way faith works in our lives. It's how God brings us through. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, that if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, nothing will be impossible for you. Have you ever wondered how much faith it takes to be saved? It really doesn't take much at all. It's not about the size of our faith. It's all about the size of the God who gives us our faith. That God who begins a good work in whom we learn to trust and who causes change. Let's look at the next parable, the parable of the leaven in verse 33. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. Leaven, we know it as yeast, works quietly and invisibly, and only the effects of it are seen. It's the same way with how God works, both in individuals and in the world around us. The kingdom of God may have small beginnings, but it will increase. Yeast is microscopic in size, 
and only a little is kneaded into the dough, yet given time, the yeast spreads throughout the dough. And in that same way, Jesus' domain started with 12 men in an obscure corner of Galilee and is continue and continues to spread across the world. The kingdom of God exerts its influence from within, not from without. Yeast makes dough rise from within. God first changes the heart of a person, and that internal change has external manifestations. The gospel influence in a culture works in the same way. Christians within a culture act as agents of change, transforming the culture from within. When the church separates itself from interacting with culture, there are dire consequences. In the 1930s, church dominations as a whole decided that popular entertainment, Hollywood, popular media, were becoming too vulgar for Christians to be a part of those industries. And Christians were pressured to keep out. And as a result, the moral underpinnings of popular entertainment, books, music, theater, television, movies, plummeted into the abyss. What a difference engaged and active Christians could have made from within. The effect of the kingdom of God is comprehensive, just like the yeast. Yeast works until the dough has completely risen. The benefit of the kingdom of God will be worldwide, as the prophet Habakkuk put it, chapter 2, verse 14, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And although the kingdom of God works invisibly, its effect is evident to all. Yeast does its job slowly, secretly, silently, but no one can deny its effect on the bread. And the same is true of the work of grace in our hearts. The nature of the yeast is to grow and to change whatever it comes in contact with. Christ's grace grows in our hearts and changes us from the inside out. And as the gospel transforms our lives, it exerts an influence on the lives and the environments around us. Here's what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. In the final two verses of today's passage, we're told that Jesus spoke at this time only in parables, and that he did so in order to reveal things that had been hidden since the foundation of the world. That's from verses 34 and 35. In Matthew's statement that this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, God is telling us that even what seems so clear in his words, you know, something like Psalm 78, that's a recount of the history of God with his people. Even there, there's an ultimate purpose and plan of salvation working underneath and being worked out through, moving forward. The purpose and plan came to light and burst into fulfillment with the life and the words of Jesus Christ. That is why reading the Old Testament is just as fulfilling, just as enlightening, just as inspiring as reading the New Testament, because it all points to Jesus Christ. It all points to him, the one in whom we have our hope. It's Jesus who gives us our beginning. It's Jesus who is the object of our trust. It is Jesus who is the source of our changing, and it is Jesus who is the stimulus of our growing. The parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the leaven teach us an essential quality of the kingdom of God that is a part of the Christian life. We're meant to understand this and, and bring it forward in our lives. Growth. Both the mustard seed and the leaven begin quite small and seemingly insignificant. Both grow to the point where they penetrate and permeate their surroundings. Both maintain a constructive and helpful influence disproportionate to their size, both provide for the needs of others from seemingly meager beginnings to become fully developed, fully mature, so that God can use them to benefit whatever environment they're in. If we do not bear the kind of fruit that makes people more aware of Jesus Christ, then a mustard seed growing into a mustard tree is not the kind of plant that we are. If our attitude toward people and circumstances do not have the sweetness and the holiness of the Savior, then our hearts have not been leavened with the leaven of God. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, you will know them by their fruits. And we can talk all we want to about what we do and why we do it, but the world can see what is distinctly from Jesus. 
Pastor Warren Lamb has noted that Christ's life within us is evident to others if there is in what we do, how we carry ourselves, how we react, how we treat our enemies, how we deal with adversity, and the kinds of things that we allow and do not allow to be in our lives. By the grace of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we get to get on our knees and ask God to show us how we're doing and to show us how to change what needs to be changed. When the people say that they see Christ in our treatment of others, that they hear Christ in what we say, that they sense Christ's gentleness as we interact with other people, that is when we know that the seed that has taken root in us is a seed of God. Then we will know that the leaven that is affecting our heart is the leaven of God. That it has been kneaded into our hearts and it is permeating all that we do. I don't know where you are today. I'm guessing you're like me. You want your life to be more flavored by the Savior. You desire healthier fruit in your life, fruit that demonstrates being firmly rooted in a personal, moment-by-moment relationship with Jesus Christ. So let us call upon God to help us submit ourselves to the instruction of the Holy Spirit, the cleansing power of his word, the loving yoke of the Redeemer, and let's lift each other up to the throne of grace. Let us call upon the grace of God to help us to open ourselves up to being transformed by the renewing of our minds so that the li- our lives will become gifts of living worship to the God of small beginnings. Amen. It's the time in our service when we take our offering, but first of all, we want you to know that here at Victory, we're concerned about whether you're safe, whether you're able to provide for your home and your household. We know that in the middle of the pandemic, some people are without jobs, some people have reduced hours, and it can be tough to put things on the shelf, pay bills. We want to know about that. And if you need help, we want you to contact us. Let us know if there's some way we can help. And we will try our best, Lord willing, to help you if we can. And that contact information is available at the same place where you can find out how you can get an offering. If you do have an income and you do want to support our work, then you can go to findvictory.org. You'll find the yellow donation button up there. And you can click on that and find out information about how to help us with this ministry. You can also send a check to 510 9th Avenue Southwest, Jamestown, North Dakota, 58401. We appreciate your help with all of that. And we look forward to hearing from you. Good morning. Welcome to Victory on this beautiful Sunday. Let's stand together to worship the Lord this morning. heard a sound coming on the wind, changing hearts and minds, healing brokenness. I feel a generation breaking through despair. I hear a generation full of faith declare. And I song it will be Out of the darkness we will rise and sing He is faithful, He is glorious And He is Jesus and all my hope is in him he is freedom he is healing right now he is the hope and joy love and peace in life yeah 
chance to meet you yet. My name is Conan. I am one of the worship leaders here. And man, what a, what a day to just praise and worship the name of the Lord. Our God is faithful, is he not? I feel like over the last few weeks, especially during the season, I've just seen time and time again how God has shown himself to be faithful from people being healed of Afflictions, the hearing stories of how God has just reached somebody that was lost. Let's continue now in worship. And as I rise. Strength of God, go before, lift me up, and as I wake, eyes of God, look upon, be my son. As I wait, heart of God, as I wait, heart of God, satisfy and sustain as I hear voice of God, lead me on, be my God. Christ be all around me, above and below me, before and behind. 
as I go. Hand of God, my defense by my side, as I rest, breath of God, fall upon, bring me peace, bring me peace above and below. So we pour out our 
in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only your praise our hearts will cry and these bones will sing great are you the Lord yes and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry and these bones will sing tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own when brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken no I won't be shaken cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your Shame no longer has a place to hide And I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken It's my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. There's power. 
There's power that can break up every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. There's power in your name. There's power that can break up every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. There's power in your name. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance. When I stand in your love and my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I Thank you for being with us this morning here at Victory Lutheran in Jamestown. We want to remind you that here on campus, we do have a 9.30 a.m. live service in our building. At 11 o'clock, we have a drive-up service that we hold in our parking lot. We certainly welcome you to come and be a part of that fellowship. If this is your first time with us, we'd appreciate it if you would hit the like button, the share button. We want your help. Remember, we talked about small things. Those little things could spread the word of God to someone who's never heard. Thank you so much for being with us. God bless.